Well, hello, everybody. It is the Dennis and Andy show with your weekly movie review. We know how much you look forward to these. Um, well, we did not go to the theater to see a movie this week because honestly, not, I, I mean, I'm sure something came out, but we're looking at the list and we're like, yeah, we don't care about any of this stuff. So uh, instead of skipping a week, if that ever happens, don't you fear there's so much streaming stuff out there. We'll find something. And what do you know? A new uh, Kevin Hart movie dropped on Netflix a few days ago. So we watched that. It wasn't the same, though, without the, the sound of Dennis chomping on popcorn and his big ass 89 200 ounce drink next to us in between the seats and and, you know, sitting in a dark theater together. But that's okay. He was at his house. I was at mine. And I can my, always go a week. My whole family it. decided to watch this movie uh, uh, with uh, with us. You know, it's it's Kevin Hart. It stars Kevin Hart and uh, Sam Worthington. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a Kevin Hart. It's going to be a comedy. So, you know, even my whole family's like, ah, let's give it a shot. Why not? Everybody kind of likes Kevin Hart. It's a heist movie. It's in the vein of, you know, Kevin. It's in the vein of, oh, there's a group of uh, five people or so that do that go around doing these big ticket heist jobs. And there's always the leader, Kevin Hart. There's always somebody that knows how to drive or pilot anything. There's always the safe cracker who can figure out in a very small amount of time how to crack the most hardcore safes. There's always some technician, somebody that's, there's an expert at everything. Surprised in this, Vincent D'Onofrio, who I love as an actor, just love that guy. Um, he's in it. And he actually, his part wasn't that big, which really surprised me because I don't see him ever taking roles where he's more in the background. Um, he is basically a master of disguise, which I really do think is great casting because that dude, is to me just one of the best actors out there and partly because he can slide in and out of different roles. Yeah. So great casting for that. Yeah, no. Um, so yeah, this movie follows a master thief and he's got an Interpol agent that he had a past relationship with Ooh. and she needs him. Interpol needs him to steal a $500 million in gold bullion to being transported, you know, from a plane. And the big bad in this one, you know, it's revealed is Jean Reno, which instantly that's my one of my wife's favorite actors of all time. So yep. she was in on this. And, uh, you know, this felt like a lighthearted version of like the Italian job, you know, things like right. that. Everybody's got their role. These guys only steal art from people that deserve it. You know, necessarily not not good guys. Let's kind of put it uh, that they're, way. They're the Robin Hood of the art field. Yeah. The one art thing world. that I, I did get a kick out of this was, you know, the, their big first one when they're walking in to steal it. It's set up. Interpol's watching them. And it's all about them stealing an NFT. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. You don't even hear anything about NFTs anymore. I was just like, this movie instantly, I was like, was is this a joke? Wow, it, it really is about NFT, but then yeah. it's really about the artist of, of the NFT. Right. So it was cute. An artist of the NFT, small role, but recognizable, is uh the actor that plays Peter Parker's best friend, Ned, I believe is his name, in the uh Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Yeah. Jacob Batalon. He was yeah. great. He pulled it off because you know he's got uh He's got that uh, disease where he has no hair and stuff. As soon as he pulled off the mask, the, all three of us were like, oh, look at that. We mm -hmm. love him as an actor. Yeah. And then the FBI, or not FBI, Interpol agent, another really recognizable actress. I never knew her name until I looked it up. So I'll let Dennis tell you her name. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Gugu. And, you know, here's the funny thing. Uh, we were sitting there because there's two Interpol agents. There's there's uh the girl who plays abby it's gugu and and then sam uh plays huxley sam worthington and we're all looking at him and we're like what is he from and i'm like he's military he always avatar military. avatar 
Right. Well, and then Elizabeth, we but we refuse to look it up. We hate looking things up. So in the halfway through the movie, all of a sudden my daughter goes, "Oh my God, he's blue!" I'm like, "Yes, Avatar." <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said, I was really impressed with the actors they got for this because I don't know. It just for for yeah. this type of movie, I just yeah. didn't think they pull in the this this really nice cast. Yeah, um, everybody Renault, did great. Jean Renault being the bad guy, he yeah. always has to have a, a heavy, the guy who, you know, the right-hand man that does it. They got Vern Gorman. Again, whenever you see him in the film, it's usually he's playing the bad guy or the heavy hitter for it. And, you know, it's, everything was very stereotypical. Very, this movie was very vanilla. It was incredibly simplistic. It was straightforward. It was, it was everything you would expect it, but there was one twist in the movie. We'll talk about this in the spoiler section, but all the characters were fun. They were enjoyable. I didn't dislike anybody in it. Um, you know, Billy uh, Magnuson, uh, he played Magnus, and uh, he was fun. He was the, the wisecracker out of the group. Yeah. And I think he's the one, I think he's going to be in the new movie Roadhouse that, uh, that, yeah. that we're looking yeah. at. And um, uh, Misan was played by uh, Yunji Kim, and um, she was cute. She was adorable. I, and the guy who played Luke, I mean, you go through the entire cast, they were all fine in this movie. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it had, it had its, and like Dan said, we'll do a spoiler review. It had all the tropes of a of a group uh, heist movie. It really did. I mean, it, it, it just was, it really did check them off. Um, yeah. Not that that really, you know, took away from it. Uh, but at the same time, because it did check them off like that, you're just kind of going, okay, it's almost like when they wrote this, they had that checklist of tropes for, you know, more lighthearted, you could say heist movies. And, so, you know, you can look at it as a positive or a negative. Uh, let's give our CGC reviews on this so we can move on, or rating so we can move on to the spoiler part. Um, I'll go first. I think you did last week. Um, you know, the funny thing is, it was enjoyable, but at the same time, honestly, I think it's forgettable. And after an hour and 45 minutes when it was over, I wasn't left with the feeling of, oh, that's time I'll never get back, like some garbage movies. But I also wasn't left with the feeling of, oh my God, I'm so glad I watched this. And unfortunately, uh, I'm I'm just giving it a 6.0. I really, it's forgettable. You know, I've seen better Kevin Hart movies. And as much as I like Vincent D'Onofrio, I was kind of let down that he wasn't in it more because yeah. he's such a good actor. So it's a 6.0. It's a, it's Netflix. If you're doing stuff around the house and you know, uh, you have the time and you want to throw something on, you know, turn it on because worst case scenario, if after a half hour, if you agree with us, uh, you can turn it off and go on about your day. Yeah, I, I can't believe we're actually fairly close on this one. Um, I actually thought we might be farther apart. Um, I'm giving it a five five. I thought it was, it was forgettable. It was very by the books. Um, it was, it was cute. Uh, I'll, I'll delve into the budget part of it later. The special effects were okay. Wonky at parts. The story was literally a to B to C to D. And there, 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 it was very vanilla. Kevin Hart really tried taking on the serious part of the role. Like he, like he wanted to be like the leading man. Yeah. Cause know. he wasn't jokey like he normally right. is. No, he saved that for Billy Magnuson who was, and he was really fun overall. Like I said, I enjoyed it. There was nothing I disliked. There was also nothing phenomenal about it. It was just okay. I would have been more disappointed had I paid to go to the theater to see it. Oh, but yeah. like you kind of alluded to, it was on Netflix. If you're looking for something, it's cute, it's fun, it's enjoyable. A five-five, it, it's worth seeing once. Yep, 
So now, guys, if you uh, don't want to hear spoilers, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our live streams or pre-recorded vids like this. And uh, now we'll talk about spoilers in three, two, one. Hello, spoiler section. Um, I, I well, you before we shot. get into stuff, I'm dying to know what this twist is you're talking about because what 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 is it? The, what do you mean? The the twist was well, it wound up not being a twist in the end, but you know how they swapped out the gold bars for. Oh yeah, uh, no, I mean that bars. to me that was. Because they, they didn't even allude to it. That's the thing. There was nothing in there other than when Luke didn't get on the plane and he's like, oh, I can't do this. And looking at her, I'm like, oh, something's up because his team wouldn't do that to him no matter what. So I no, like, but you know what the problem when they showed that scene where the one guy, Luke, you know, whatever his job was, he's kind of a technical guy, too. And he, yeah. he just couldn't go through with it. And, you know, everybody's on the plane. Kevin Hart and the Interpol agent are playing like while they're on the plane, they're they're playing like they're a couple and they get the phone call from Luke. And it's one of those things, once again, where Kevin Hart and Luke obviously are in on this. They know he, Kevin knows Luke is full of shit. Right. So it's fine that he gets the phone call from Luke and he has to tell you know, his, the Interpol agent, um, he's not gonna be able to do it, but don't worry, we can still handle it. But when they cut to Luke, who is still in the airport sitting there saying, you know, I, I can't go through with it. It's just one of those things where it's like his body posture and everything is try is selling this. Oh, I just can't go through with it. And my, the reason I bring it up as being kind of lame is yes, visually it helps sell it that we see him kind of like, oh, I, I can't go through with it as the audience to swerve us away. But at the same time, it's like if you call in sick to work, if I call in sick to work, they can't see me. They can only hear me. So I could be sitting back all casual and just be like, <clears throat> yeah, guys, I can't, I can't come in. I'm not feeling well. So there's really not a point for him to have visually have to sell it either when he's talking to Kevin Hart. I mean, honestly, anybody could have called Kevin Hart and and just been like, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to have chicken and turkey for dinner, blah, 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 because Kevin knows he's going to hang up and go, oh, no, that's Luke. He's not going to be able to go through yeah. it. <laughs> like I said, it. I don't want to belabor the point, but, you know, that that it that was the twist for the audience. That was the one twist in right. the movie. And. But it didn't really, they didn't show how they got to it until the end where they went back. You're like, okay, all right. Which is, which is another trope of these comedy heist movies is at the end of the movie, oh, yeah, we also did this. How did you do that? And then yeah. they go through the sequences of, well, so-and-so did this and so-and-so did this. And you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah. Jean, a couple of the actors that I have to touch base on. One is Jean Renault. Um, we love him as an actor. Oh, he's great. Said, it's my wife's favorite, but man, they did not give him enough to do. I do not like villains that, and, and this is what they gave him for a role. He did fine with his role, but it was like, he's on the phone. Oh yeah. Have the dogs eat him uh, on the phone. Oh yeah. Do this dude. You're the big bad guy. That's uh, supposed to be on there. And half of it until the end was all on the phone. It was like, what a waste of talent. That that was a big right. waste. And the other big waste of talent was, you alluded to it, Vincent D'Onofrio, which his character, so he's the master of disguise, right? Right. And, and I loved it. I loved his portrayal of it. But he's also like the worst master of disguise ever, like on purpose. I don't know. Should I use this one or this one? You know, and he's looking at the beards and you're like, well, it really doesn't matter which one you're going with because, you know, you're so bad at this job. So they hint at it a couple of times in the movie that he's this master of disguise. But every single time it's so bad that it's almost like a running joke that he's this master, but he's the worst master you've ever seen. And you never get a payoff on whether he is good or not.
but his interaction with Kevin Hart with Cyrus was great when he was trying to convince him about the girlfriend and that he's oh make this face and look at her and da da da. They had some great parts, but it never went far enough to develop it. This movie was an hour and forty eight minutes and. It needed character development by add another 15 minutes. And I think this movie would have gotten a lot better. Yeah. So what was the budget on this thing? This was the big surprise on this. I Because the CG in some spots were pretty decent. And right. in other spots, you're like, oh, wow. It was $100 million. And that surprised me. It was that much for what we got. So I'm thinking it has to be a lot of it for these actors uh, to come it's, on. It's got to be because you look at 80 million for the creator and what it looked like compared to and it was 100. I mean, I looked at this movie and I'm like, once again, I've, I've said it and I'll keep saying it. Money is just getting inflated for this stuff to where it, it, it's got to be like just funneled back in somehow <clears throat> where it's like, how much is catering? $5 million. It's like, what? Because I, I I would have guessed the budget on this movie was like $50 million. None of those actors are getting $20 million, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's just, it's ridiculous. But anyhow, you know, guys, it, it really, I mean, Dennis even said it earlier. It's like the Italian job. Um, it's at the but Italian job. I mean, the Italian good. job did have some you know, jokes in it and stuff. It was a lighthearted heist movie as well. It was a little, it was more dramatic than this one, but yeah, it, it, it really is just forgettable. And I think part of it too is usually when Netflix puts something out like this with somebody like Kevin Hart, you hear about it before it comes out on Netflix. I heard nothing. I was just, when we, earlier in the week, we kept seeing what's coming out Thursday, what's coming out Thursday. And I said, well, let me look at Netflix, see if there's anything we can watch. And it was right there. And it was already out. It wasn't like coming soon, which you'll see sometimes. It was already out. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, wow. oh. And the funny thing is, I never heard of it. So I'm like, oh, is this one of those movies that came out like four or five years ago that Netflix is like, all right, let's show it now. And I click on it and it said 2024. And I'm like, oh, damn, I never heard anything about this. So that put up some warning signals, too. So Yeah, but. With that being said, my whole family watched it. Everybody liked it. They thought it was fine. Um, they thought it was cute. It was fun. It wasn't a waste of time. And I kind of walked away with the same thing. So if you got time, you know what? It's worth a watch. You probably watch it once. But it was cute. It had some fun parts. That's right. And what is also fun, and you could say cute, is Nice and Tight, the comic book pencil art of Andy Smith. That's me. Guys, this book is now 64 pages. We are only uh, $99 away from eight grand, uh, $199 away from the next, or not a hundred, uh, I'm sorry, $1,099 away from the next stretch goal, which will make this book a nice wire uh, spiral bounding. So you really can open it up and lay it flat, which makes it easier to look at. Easier for scanning if you want to scan in some of the pencils I've that are featured in the book. Uh, it's basically a book featuring some of my favorite fully penciled pages from the past 20 years. Pretty much the inker and the editor were the only ones that saw this stuff. Now you can too. It does come in a digital format. I could scroll through the campaign, but I want you to. So go to the link in the description below. And take your time, scroll through it, look at the different options that are available, and pick this up. A nice art book that'll look good on your bookshelf, and you can learn from it as well. And also coming next Thursday, next Thursday, 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 is the sign-up page for Core Draft, The Awakening. Core Draft Volume 2, The Saga Continues. We will be launching the sign-up page next Thursday, so join us Thursday afternoon for that. And uh, there you go. And then next Wednesday on the Dennis and Andy show, it'll definitely be me there with Richard Stonkey. He's a colorist that is working on a new project we're going to talk about. And uh, Dennis might be here. He might not. We'll find out.
next Wednesday. So stay tuned. Um, he has an appointment in the morning that could knock him out for the rest of the day. We'll see. It's, you know, getting all your teeth pulled out so you can get dentures and never have to brush your teeth again. Uh, I don't know if it's worth it. I'd rather have them fall out on their own, but Dennis is just being preventative and going, you know what? Brushing my teeth takes too much time. I'm just going to get a full rack of dentures. So uh, that's what he's doing. At least that's the story I'm telling. And uh, he can't refute it. Like, subscribe, share. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Nice and tight, the comic book pencil art of Andy Smith. That's me. This book features 52 pages of some of my favorite full pencils that I did for other companies over the past two decades. The raw pencils as they were seen by the inker and now you can see them for the first time. This book also comes in a digital format so you can practice your inking in your favorite program. Back it today.